Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Amen. I've entitled the message today. The subtitle is called The Connection. It has to do with connecting the different works of the Spirit. But we've entitled the message today, One Spirit, Three Experiences. One Spirit with Three Experiences. The first thing I want us to understand before we step into the, the experiences of the Spirit, the three experiences of the Spirit, is the first glass up here represents my life before I know Christ. It's empty. Now, if I was to walk out in the street today and say, you know, your life is empty, I'm sure some would fight that and would argue with, say, hey, wait a minute, no. I'm very happy. I'm very fulfilled, you know. And uh, yeah, well, we do have a human spirit, and we can fill our lives with a lot of things. But do those things fulfill us? Do those things bring us the comfort and the joy and happiness in life that we search for? You know, Jesus made a statement in John chapter 15, verse 5, right in the middle of that verse, Jesus said, Apart from me, you can do nothing. And, and, and one translation says, without me, you can do nothing. Now, if he is saying this of the disciples, then what is he saying that of those who don't know the Lord? How can we be anything? How can we do anything? How can we have fulfillment and joy and happiness that he gives? Not as the world gives, but the joy and the happiness and the peace that he gives. How can one know that with an empty glass? with an empty life. The only way that we can ever know that is when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And when he comes into our hearts, this here, this glass being full, represents Jesus Christ coming into our life. This represents salvation and transformation. Salvation and in regeneration. When I gave my heart to the Lord, I was regenerated. I was given a brand new beginning. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I now have Christ in me. I have the Spirit of God in me. This represents Christ. This represents the Spirit of God. This represents God. This also represents at the same time that I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I also received the fruit of the Spirit. So we, in Galatians 5, and 23, we have the nine fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, temperance, forgiveness, faithfulness. We have the, the, the nine fruit of the Spirit that, that we can tap into in, in our daily lives, that when we walk with the Lord, we have access to all these fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit that he gave us upon our salvation. John 3 5 says and 6 says, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Now, Pastor Ryan recently spoke of this, and I just want to add one thing to it. The analogy that, that uh, Jesus was using here was the analogy of actual birth that you have an embryo inside of an embryo bag. And around that embryo, inside that embryo bag is the water that surrounds the embryo, that surrounds that new life. Well, Jesus said you cannot be born again unless you're born of the water and of the Spirit. So that water is a washing away of our sins, of the washing away through the Word of God. And, and then of the Spirit, which is God's Spirit that comes in us. So he was making the analogy that just like in the human birth, the, the, the embryo bag with the embryo inside, is surrounded by water. So our lives are surrounded by the word of God now as the spirit of God brings new birth to us inside our lives. And I want you to imagine something today. We're going to celebrate Christmas real soon here and it's the coming of Christ and then he dies and he rises again. We picture Christ on the cross when we read scripture and he rises again. And, and stop and think about something. Even though the Bible says that at sometimes he's at the right hand of the Father sitting or sometimes he's standing. It depends on what the storyline is in Scripture. He does both. Stands sometimes, sits sometimes at the right hand of the Father. Ever make an intercession for us in Romans, book of Romans. But try to imagine that the very God of this universe, think about this, 
If you are a believer, if you have salvation, if you have been regenerated, if you've been given a brand new beginning, he actually lives inside of us. Isn't that awesome? That the God of this universe lives inside of us. Folks, it's, it's mind-boggling. You know, uh, a professor in Bible school one time said, if you try to conceive how God ever had a beginning, you can go insane. He said, you literally can go insane. If you, if you spend too much time on your mind trying to figure out how God has always been, that he's never had a beginning, he's, like this, he's, like a, like a, he's never had a beginning, he's always existed. Always, if you try to figure that out, eventually you'll go insane. It's impossible. Well, try to think about this today. It's, it's, while it's impossible to believe, it's hard to believe that he's always existed, but we believe he does and has and is and, and has always existed. Imagine he can live inside of us. Through the Holy Spirit. And I, I want to I show you something here. In 1 Corinthians, and I'm going to show you what difference this makes. I, I want us to understand what difference this makes in our lives. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and in verses 9 through 16, I want you to think how many times the word spirit is used. That is what the whole scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So in other words, you cannot begin to conceive of what God has in store for you. You can't imagine it. Now think about what you want God to be. Think about what you want God to do for you. Try to imagine that. That's way beyond what we can imagine. Amazing. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his, come on, say it, spirit, for his Searches out everything that shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except by God's own spirit. So the only way we could ever know God, the only way we can ever understand God, the only way we can ever experience God is through the Holy Spirit that came into us upon our salvation when Jesus entered into our being. And we have received God's, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Let's receive them. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the spirit. Using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths. Listen to that. People who are not spiritual can't receive these spiritual truths that God teaches in his word. This is why it's so challenging and it's so difficult to convince people about God out there in the marketplace and on the street corners, etc. It's because they're not spiritual. It's because they're not spiritual. It's because they've never received Jesus, so they can't understand spiritual things. That's why we have to live the spiritual life, for that's the only understanding they will ever understand of who God is. That's how I live. For God. Until they come to know God for themselves. I'm the only definition of God they have. You are the only definition of God. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these spiritual truths from God's... It all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. So if I'm spiritual, I should have a better understanding of what spirituality is and what the spirit is and what God is and who God is and what God does. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Wow. You got Christ's mind in you today. We have all the access in the world we need to know who he is and how he works and how he operates and what he wants us to do, what he wants us to be. Eight times the word spirit was used. Three times the word spiritual was used. Folks, we cannot know who God is without knowing God personally in our hearts and lives. That's our salvation. 
That's the first work of the Holy Spirit, is convict us of our sins. It's the Spirit of God that draws man to Jesus. The Spirit of God that draws man to Jesus, the Bible says. The, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all involved in our salvation experience. As we move along, we experience now not only salvation and regeneration, but now we experience what's called sanctification and transformation. You know Romans 12, 1 and 2, many of you, and, and, and those watching online, and uh, but God's, uh, we're transformed by the renewing of mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a transformation that comes, the renewing of our mind as we worship the Lord, as we walk with the Lord, as we experience our salvation, as we experience this regeneration, this newness of life, and as we are transformed, we experience what's called sanctification. Sanctification is a process whereby we grow in our Lord daily. It's a process whereby every day we grow in the Lord, every day we make choices. Sanctification is an act, it's an active verb that has to do with change. As Pastor Ryan said last week, we've been set apart for holiness. Now we walk in that holiness. Now we produce that holiness. Now we become a holy producers of the kingdom of God and the workers for God. Now there, there, there are two ways uh, in, in which this happened. And, and, and what I call this is I call the sec third glass here, the th which is, is the second work of the Holy Spirit, I call it the stirring of the Spirit. This, this is the, what I call the stirring of the Spirit. We're, we're, the Spirit stirs us within. This is our position. We've been saved. I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have the fruit of the Spirit in me to operate in. I begin to walk in the Lord. But now I begin to experience the stirring of the Holy Spirit through this sanctification, through this transformation. In other words, it has to do with it being active. Do you think Jesus just wanted us to be saved and come to church on Sunday for an hour, hour and a half a week, and that's it, and that's all we experience in Christianity? Absolutely not. He had big plans for us from the beginning of time to use us for his kingdom so that he could stir us. So well, there are two ways that this stirring takes place. Number one, the first way it takes place is through my initiative, my intentionality to come before the Lord in reading his word, in meditating, in witnessing, in serving him, in praying, in worshiping the Lord, in spending time with God, and getting to know God, where I take the initiative to stir up the Spirit. My praying can stir the Spirit into action. It can. My praying can stir the heart of God to move. God moves through prayer. I can help stir the spirit of God up in my life by me taking the initiative and taking the time to jump in and not just think this is enough to do what I do on Sunday. Oh, no, 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 honey. I've got to do a lot during the week. I've got to be active and busy during the week. I've got to make sure that I'm doing everything to get involved in the spiritual things that God has called my life to and your, and your life too. Which brings us to the second thing because they are sisters. They're brother and sister. They work together. They're meshed in together so much they could hardly be separated. But then the second one is this, that through his spirit within, he manifests himself. He comes alive in me. He stirs me. He stirs me up. He stirs me up. I, I was getting in the car one day at Food Line, and uh, I noticed a lady came out, and she didn't have her cart of food. She had a small cart of food. She didn't have her food with her. And she stood there, and she looked troubled, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. The Spirit of the Lord did what? Stirred my heart and said, go talk with her. I, I, I kind of hesitated because I just wasn't sure what, I wanted to make sure I was hearing from the Lord. I, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And the, but I really felt this push of the Holy Spirit. Go talk with her. So I got out of the car. I was getting ready to pull away. I got out of the car, which I said, ma'am, I, I noticed you, di you didn't come out with your groceries. And she said, well, I, I didn't have the, uh, enough money. I, didn't, I couldn't get them. And I'm waiting for a ride. I don't know where my ride is. I'm waiting for a ride. She looks so troubled. I said, let's go inside. We went inside. There's such the cart of food. We took care of it. Paid for it. Sent her on her way. Folks, I didn't say that to brag. I said that to tell you to pay attention to the Holy Spirit who's telling you to take care of the poor and the needy. 
the Lord stirred my spirit. I took what money I had, that's his money in me, that's my money I carry is his money. I took his money, paid her grocery bill. She got to go home with the groceries and I walked away with a giant blessing. I even teared up inside. I was so overjoyed that I could be stirred by the spirit, that I could obey the Lord. When you walk out of here today and you obey the Lord, do you know that's, that's you initiating a stirring of the Holy Spirit in your life? When you are praying and, and, or you're at work and the Lord lays someone on your heart, what do you think he did that for? You know what he was doing? What was he doing? Your spirit to pray for that person. When you're at work and someone is very, 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 very troubled and they're very hurt and very upset about something, and all of a sudden, you know you should pray for that person, but you're feeling this uh, nudge inside to go talk to them and, and ask them if they're okay. What is that? Now, we may think that that's just us being good people. And you know what? You're good people. And you could do that just being good people. But never underestimate the fact that one reason we're better people than what we were is because the Spirit of God is in us through salvation to make us better people so that we'll be more sensitive to the things around us so that we'll be more useful and more available and ready to be used of God, to be stirred by God so we can go out and stir up this community. So the Holy Spirit can work through us and turn things around in this community so that people can be turned to God because God's Spirit stirred us up because I let God stir me up because I stirred up God in me because I spent time with God so that when I left my time of prayer and devotion, I had something to give to the people around my life. And there's a lot of people who need a lot to be given to them. And, and, and it's, you know, same with that witnessing. You know that you know that you know you need to tell them about the Lord, where they come from. Spirit will stir you up inside. And you open your mouth and begin to tell them about the Lord. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, even greater works because I'm going to the Father. Some people say, well, how can anybody do greater works than Jesus? I'm not sure that the writer here at the time that this was written, I'm not sure what they were saying was that we would do greater works than Jesus did. I believe that if I understand the structure of this in the original language, in the Greek, my understanding of this verse that it had to do with that you would do the same kinds of works that Jesus did and there'll be many more of those works being done because there's more Christians doing them. So the greater works had to do with more people doing more works for the Lord instead of Jesus doing just his works. It's all kinds of people doing the works of the Lord. That's the greater works he's talking about. Look at the people's lives you can touch this week that others of you will never touch, but you will touch because you're the only ones that will come in touch with those people. Isn't that cool? Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Can you believe that 800 to 1,000 of you people can plant seeds this week? Can you believe what God can do with 1,000 planted seeds this week in this town? You talk about a revival. You talk about God's spirit being poured out upon this community. God can turn this town upside down. With you planting the seed out there, with you letting the Spirit of God stir you and speak up and speak out for the kingdom of God. Oh, man. Uh, you have, and I have no clue what God can do. Oh, that's right. That's what his word said. It's beyond our imagination what God can do. Well, praise the Lord. He said, for we are God's masterpiece in Ephesians 2.10. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Now, look, look at this. What did I just get through saying? Look at the thousands of seeds we can plant this coming week. And look at this. So we can do the good things. Look at these words. These are awesome words. He planned for us long ago to do. What does this mean? Okay, here we go. There's not one thing you're going to do this week for God, but that he didn't plan a long time ago for you to do. Oh, man. Now, what does that mean if I walk out of here and don't do it? Was that just a little bit convicting? Think about it. 
If he's got all these things for us to do and I walk out and don't let the spirit stir me and I don't stir up the spirit in me by spending time with him, what does that mean? I don't want to be caught not being ready to do what he planned in my life a long time ago to do. Say, oh, pastor, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was supposed to do that when I got saved. That's okay. You just turn your life over to the Lord. You're no longer your own. You've been bought with the price, the price of his blood. We are God's property. He is a jealous God. The Bible in the Old Testament, his name is jealous. He's a jealous God. He loves us, and he wants to use us. Don't be afraid to let God use you this week. Drop the seed. Watch him grow it. And everyone said, Amen. 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 So the next time you have an urge to pray, pray. Urge to witness, witness. Urge to help, help. Do it. Which brings us to our third experience of the Holy Spirit that Pastor Ryan will be spending time with. I'm kind of like the connecting message between what he's preached and to bringing it to today for the future. And this is where we experience what we call the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say infilling. And what that means is, is that we, 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 you hear the terminology baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that is correct. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really what's called the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is that when I got saved, the Holy Spirit came in me. The fruits of the Spirit came in me. The best fruit you'll ever eat in your life, by the way. And then we were given that salvation and regeneration. Then we were given the uh, sanctification and transformation through the Holy Spirit stirring us inside to great experiences. And, and, and by the way, I want to give one experience that borders the supernatural so that we'll see the two beginning to work together. I, re- I remember a time when I was in my mom and dad's trailer with my family. We were having fellowship on Friday evening. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get home right away. Your son's in trouble. That was Aaron. He was in trouble. That's all the Holy Spirit gave me. And I said to my wife, "Hun, we got to go right now. Right now. We got to go. Mom, Dad, love you. Got to go. I didn't tell him what was going on. I just didn't tell my wife at the time what was going on. Got in the car and went home. I said, "Hun, something's wrong. Aaron's in trouble. The Holy Spirit said, go home. Well, Aaron was at the youth group, so that was puzzling to me. What I didn't know was that he was dropped off at the Bowling Alley area from youth group, Correct. And there was a carload of guys chasing you, wanted to beat you up, you said. And so you were running into the neighborhood in Rodney Village where we lived. Well, when we drove up, we got home at just the exact time that Aaron ran up to the door. I said, son, what is wrong? What's going on? He said, well, there's a carload of guys that were trying to pick me up, to beat me up, or jump out and beat me up. Uh, and I had to take off running. And we got home just when he got to the front door. So if they were still out there, we were there. Now, where did that come from? But it's also a supernatural work of the Spirit. It's called the word of knowledge. It's knowing something you couldn't have known unless the Holy Spirit didn't tell you right there. Geographically, not in the same location, but the Holy Spirit told us to get home. i like to see them jump this guy today now. <laughs> that would be a different story. I don't think my son would run just yet. He'd, I think he'd check it out first before he'd run. But anyways, uh, uh, it, it, the point is, we don't, we just don't, Realize how many times God is urging us to do things. We need to obey that voice. Listen to that voice of God. Listen to that word and obey it. Amen? Amen. So let's get back to this. Infill with the Holy Spirit. What is the infill? Watch this. The Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Baptism, Holy Spirit, infilling. Same Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. All three the same. Over the years, if I ever had a question that was asking me of people, so many times people thought that this was a different experience, a, a, a different Holy Spirit that comes along the scene. No, all one and the same. In fact, Scripture says there are different kinds of service, but the same, but the same Spirit distributes them all. So it's the same Spirit. Salvation, stirring, infilling. And here's what happens. We get infilled And all of a sudden, we start to experience the supernatural experiences of the Holy Spirit in our lives. There are nine supernatural gifts. Oh, there's all kinds of other giftings. 
But I want to read to you the nine gifts of the Spirit. It's the message of wisdom, the message of power. By the way, the word wisdom has to do with future, not just the ability to know how to supernaturally handle something wisely. Somebody once said that wisdom is the, is the offshoot of knowledge, that, that when you have the knowledge, now you have the wisdom to know how to handle the knowledge, the gift of knowledge. Those two work together. But the word wisdom here in the Greek also has the ideal of future understanding, has the wisdom of understanding things of the future, okay? And to another message of knowledge by the means of the same spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, by that one Spirit, to distinguishing of spirits, a very important uh, uh, gift of the Spirit, the supernatural ability to know what's of the devil, to know what's of God, and to know what's of man. But the word there in the Greek for the word discerning has to do with discretion. Having the ability to dis have discretion between what we know is the enemy, what we know is God, what we know is of human origin. It's important to be able to know the difference between the three of those. And it primarily has to do with discerning of evil spirits. So we know when evil spirits is that word. To another, the different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation. And to, to another, the prophecy. And listen to this. It says, all these are the work of the one and same spirit. The one and the same spirit. And he distinguishes them to each one just as he determines. In other words, I don't own these gifts. And that gift of knowledge that God uses me in from time to time, and he's used me a lot, I didn't own that gift. When I would give a prophecy in church at times, I didn't own that gift, but God used me in it. You don't own the gifts. But you're used in those gifts. When you're infilled with the Holy Spirit, he gives you the power. This is like an extra boost of his power. It's like a greater outflowing of his power. Don't get scared. <laughs> this is homemade. This is our paper towel roll at home with some red paper. This is from my mask. I cut it off. It's very safe. Don't be afraid. Now, in Acts 1.8, it talks about you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In fact, here's the scripture. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So when I was in filled with the Holy Spirit as a junior, middle away in high school, in junior high school, I was filled with the Holy Spirit on a Sunday night. I didn't want to go home. I just want to stay at the altar and be filled. I broke into this heavenly language I had never spoken before, and I just didn't want to go home. And I was at the altar praying for a gentleman to be filled with the Spirit, and here I wasn't filled with the Spirit. It didn't make sense to me, and I said, when the Lord was speaking to me, he said, go to the altar and pray for Steve to be filled with the Spirit. I thought, uh -uh, Lord, I, I can't. I'm not filled with the Spirit. I stayed nailed where I was. We, we were big on altar calls on Sunday night. You didn't have church without an altar call. Some Sunday nights, that's all we had. And uh, sure enough, the Lord spoke to me again, go pray for Steve to get filled with the Spirit. I said, Lord, I can't do that. I'm not filled with the Spirit. It just seems, don't, don't seem right. I can't do that, Lord. I'm praying. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. He says, go pray for Steve to be filled with the Spirit. And I looked up, and I saw my dad. He's over there, and he goes. <clears throat> <laughs> he did. He had that look on his face. He didn't have to say a word. He looked at me and he was saying, get to the altar. That's what his face was saying. So I got up. So said, okay, Lord. I got behind Steve. Laid hands on Steve. I prayed for Steve to be filled with the Spirit. I got, I got uh, attacked by three godly, Holy Ghost filled, old, don't take offense to that, <laughs> old ladies on their knees got behind me. All three laid their hands on me very gently. And I got gloriously filled with the Holy Spirit. And I began to just whew, lose it in the Spirit. Steve never did get filled with the Spirit that night. I don't know what happened there. I felt so bad for Steve. He never did get filled with the Spirit, but oh my goodness, I got gloriously filled. I, got, I just hope he did eventually, but I got gloriously filled. I didn't want to go home. And by, that, by the way, that very next day, I started carrying my Bible. 
all of a sudden I had the urge to carry my Bible. I carried it for the rest of my high school career. Now, I want to show you something. I want to explain this to you. This is a hunk of dynamite. And if I threw this out, on, out there, it, it would do nothing. It wouldn't do what it could do. That means that this is power potential. It's got a lot of potential power, doesn't it? Now, if I light this fuse and throw it out there, where are you going to go? I'm out of here, as Dorothy would say. I'm out of here. She would say that at our team meetings. I'm out of here. Uh, so we're out of here. We're, we're going to run as fast as we can, hit the floor because it's going to explode. You see, that's the difference between these two and this one. It's the same spirit, but what happens is I'm saved. God stirs within me, uses me in awesome, God use you awesome ways. We already said that. But now I've got I have access to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now I have access to the supernatural gifts of the Spirit. Now I become power explosive. Honey, I can go out there and explode for God. I can explode for the kingdom. Because I've got the supernatural power of the Spirit to lead me in the gifts of the Spirit. Folks, you want to experience the supernatural gifts of the Spirit. Are you saying that God can never use me in the gifts of the Spirit if I don't have the infill of the Holy Spirit? No, God can use you in the gifts of the Spirit if he wants. But why should we settle for less than what we can have and experience? Because you see here, it's expression and manifestation. Salvation, regeneration, sanctification, and uh, transformation. Thank you. And this one is our expression and manifestation, which leads us to our seventh one, glorification, which is our eternal home in heaven. Now you have all the shuns given to you today. Anyways, we are power explosive folks when we are filled with the Holy Spirit to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to give you that in your life. You will be learning more about that, I'm sure, in the weeks to come. So praise the Lord. I want to just give us some takeaways before we close today. Number one, to start the connection with God is through salvation and regeneration. He makes us brand. Behold, old things become, are gone. Behold, all things become new. And I need to explain one more thing. It comes to me right now. This is where the Lord is speaking. I need to share this. I did in the last service. Under salvation, I want us to get accustomed to the word justification. The word sanctification is to be set apart, to be declared holy, to set apart. Justification does the same thing. It means to be set apart, but it has another active meaning to it. It means just as if, justification means just as if you've never sinned. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how awesome and merciful and gracious God is. To handle us as if we have never sinned. Now, if I walk out here today and I do something that wasn't right, and God's Spirit comes and says, Yes, Lord? Do you remember when you had that ill thought about that person? Yeah. Not good. Okay, Lord. He said, I had, to write your, I had to write that on your, your board yeah, up in heaven here. That wasn't good. You need to take care of that. Okay, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to grow in you. I want to experience you. I apologize, Lord, for those thoughts. I apologize for that act. I apologize for what I said. I apologize for what I did. I apologize for what I said. Whatever it may be. I apologize for what I saw. I apologize, whatever it may be. And the Lord says, thank you. It's covered. Psalms 34, 18, but God saveth those that be of a broken spirit, those of a contrite spirit. I'm sorry, Lord. No problem, Pastor. I just erased your board again. It, that slate is clean as ever. Folks, can you imagine walking around with our past being so under the blood that it tell them that they should have been in church <laughs> instead of calling you? But can, can you imagine, imagine Jesus looks upon us as if we have never sinned when we give our hearts to him. How awesome is that? Enjoy your freedom that we read about. Amen? Amen. Here we go. To start the connection with God is through salvation and regeneration. To stay in connection with God is through sanctification 
and transformation. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And to be used supernaturally is to have expression and manifestation of his power through you. So we have the spirit, which is the same, with three experiences. Don't fall short of any of them. And today, for those of you online and those in the service, if this is your life right now, we can change that. We can change that by helping you pray a prayer today that will bring into your life this experience. Salvation through Christ. Transformation through his power. All we need to do is acknowledge our need for him. Listen, you know if this is working. And I'm going to tell you right now, I can answer that for you. You know it's not working. <laughs> you know it's not working, folks. You know it's not. That's why you're not happy inside today. But God has a happiness and a joy and a peace that the world doesn't offer you. That he gives you through this. And through a simple prayer today that we're going to pray, we encourage you to invite him in. And then let us know by calling the church or online that you prayed the prayer, you online, and you that are in the service you can go back to that center table in the back and let somebody know, I received Christ today as my Savior. Folks, don't walk out without failing to experience the most wonderful experience that God has prepared in advance for your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father in heaven, right now we just come to you and we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will help those who are listening in online and those in this service. That, Father, in their hearts and lives, if they do not acknowledge you as Savior but want to right now, they can. And here, my friend, is how to do it. Dear Jesus, I offer my life to you. I offer my heart to you. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. I am not happy. I do feel empty. I've tried all kinds of things in this world and I still wake up feeling hopeless and helpless. So my heart is open to you today, Jesus. And I want to experience your salvation. I want to experience you in my life. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and as my Savior. I invite you into my life to come in and dwell and to change me. Lord, once again, we just lift up our ministry team and this entire congregation, this whole church. Lord, this church is making an awesome difference in this community. And all the other churches that are preaching the gospel, they're doing the same thing. We do not deny that. Thank you for every church that's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and just fill their pews to capacity. Bless them, Lord. Bless this team. May they enjoy the rest of this day, God, and just touch their lives. Give them that sense of understanding how important and great the call of God is once again. And be with this wonderful church, Lord. Bless and strengthen your people, we pray. And we will be careful to give you the glory, praise, and honor. And all God's people prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you.